Okay, good morning. Sorry, I should have tried that out in advance here. I think I've used up several minutes of my time just getting set up here. Uh, I want to thank you all for giving me an opportunity to speak here this morning. My name is Jason Sonic. I'm a research scientist at Adventium Labs, a small research company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And today I'm going to talk about the Secure Server project. And this might be a somewhat unusual presentation because although this project has been incubating for a while, we've only started working on it officially about four weeks ago. So it's still pretty early in the stage of development. So this morning I'm going to be talking primarily about the customer requirements that are driving this effort and also advocating for some architectural changes in Zen Server that I think have been on the roadmap for a while. And so I believe this is something that's important to the Zen Server community and also to the broader Zen community. And so I wanted to use this opportunity to tell you what it is that we're trying to achieve and to solicit feedback from you uh, as potential stakeholders in this. Uh, and so I would encourage you, and I will definitely save time at the end for questions and feedback. So here's a little outline of my talk. First, I'm going to talk about the uh, motivation and oops. First, I'm going to talk about the motivation and objectives for the Secure Server project. Then I'm going to talk about the threat landscape that we're using for the development of Secure Server, the design of or the current design of Secure Server, the status of the project to date, and then the our near-term roadmap for future work. So first I should tell you that this has been a customer-driven effort, and the desired outcome is a server virtualization platform based on Zen that supports secure server multiplexing. Now clearly Zen has the server, multiplex uh, server multiplexing aspect pretty well wrapped up. And so this morning I'm going to focus primarily on the secure part, and specifically why we feel that something more secure is required and what that more secure system looks like. So I'm presenting this in the context of a cloud-like environment where we have multiple different tenants who are mutually suspicious. And if you read the abstract for this talk, you may have noticed that I pitched this originally as a multi-level secure uh, environment. So I apologize for the bait and switch. I've couched the presentation today in terms of multiple tenants because I think that's the more generally interesting case. But if you were to look at multi-level security, I think you can apply many of the same design principles there. And so the goals that we are really trying to achieve here is twofold. So first, we want to ensure that multiple tenants can share a single platform while ensuring that data and processing for those tenants, specifically the confidentiality and integrity of those things are safe from co-tenants. And then the other goal of this work is to ensure controlled information sharing between tenants on that system while still maintaining that isolation and ensuring controls on that information sharing between the tenants and the flow of that information are satisfied. And so one question as Zen developers may ask is that doesn't Zen already support a lot of what we're trying to achieve? And yes, in many aspects it does. And the big problem that we've identified is that most of the deployed systems still rely on a monolithic control domain. And there are many shared privileged components running in DOM0 that present a threat in this sort of environment. So in this slide, I am showing a simple scenario that I'll return to throughout the talk. So we have two virtual machines, orange and green, belonging to different tenants that are sharing a single system running Secure Serve, which is the working name for this high assurance server virtualization platform based on Zen. And now from our perspective, there are five key requirements for the system. And I already talked about the first two on the last slide, so I won't go over those again. But some of the other ones that were raised by our customers that this needs to support enterprise-ready management. And compatibility with management tools like Zen Center and especially cloud management systems like OpenStack and CloudStack is something that's very important to our customer. And one other thing that was raised was that the system needs to be highly scalable. And we don't really have any firm requirement here, but thousands of VMs on a server has been floated around. And so I know that you know, we're not quite there yet in terms of scalability on Zen Server, but considering all these different requirements and 
we decided that Zen Server was the best fit in terms of satisfying these requirements and using that as a basis for building this server virtualization platform. And it just so happened that it worked out very nicely that Citrix re recently released Zen Server to the open source community because that really provides us with the opportunity to do this work. So in this diagram, I move to kind of the current state of the system. On the last slide, I presented what we'd like. And on this system, I present what we have in a Zen server based system today. And so for the sake of simplicity, I've illustrated just a few of the major components that live in DOM0. So we have QEMU, Zappy, Zen store, the backend drivers, device drivers, so on and so forth. Now in this case, we have two, but there are potentially many guests sharing a system. And the weakest guest is, in my opinion, the weakest link in the system. And I'll justify that in a couple of slides. But once an attacker has a foothold on one of those systems, whether it was a tenant was malicious to begin with or they have been compromised in some way, then that VM can be used as a springboard to attack the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of the other tenants on the system. And there are other possible attacks as well. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with cross VM side channel attacks. There's been quite a body of research looking at using micro architectural side channels to compromise confidentiality and integrity indirectly by relying on shared hardware. And if you're not familiar with that, I'd be happy to refer you to some of the work. And then cloud management provides an additional attack vector. So the users need to be able to manage and configure their VMs. And the Zappy tool stack is relatively complex. I'm sure you've all heard the apocryphal uh, one exploitable bug per 1,000 lines of code. I'm sure Zappy is a lot better than that, but it's uh, still a relatively large and complex code base that interfaces with a lot of other components. And so these are all threats that have driven, really, the desire to develop. I mean, these are the kind of things that concern our customer and that has driven the development of this secure server project. And so today I'm going to focus primarily on the first threat, VM escape attacks, to uh, motivate the rest of the architecture that I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> so this is a bit of a tangent, but I mentioned on the requirements slide that we're also interested in doing this controlled information sharing between domains that are sharing a system. So I feel that I'm obligated to say a little something about it. And today you can easily set up uh, inter-VM networking using separate networks in DOM0. But of course, the isolation between those separate networks is a lot weaker than the separation that is provided by, by the hypervisor between different domains. And what we want to be able to support is these high assurance private networks. And so Zen now provides the spatial separation and some of the low level primitives necessary to define these trustworthy uh, VM, inter-VM communication channels. And so we are interested in developing such a solution that would ideally maintain compatibility with some of these existing filters, this VM that I've labeled compliance here that's enforcing some policy on the information sharing. And so we have an approach for this that we favor, but it's, I'm not gonna be talking about it here this morning, that's another talk, but if you have an interest, mutual interest in this, I'd be happy to talk to you offline. Uh, so that's, that's what we're interested in. So now I'll move into what I'm calling the threat landscape for Secure Server. And I, and I call it that because we have yet to formalize this as a th threat model. Rather, it's more of a survey of the recent vulnerabilities against Zen reported in the CVE for the past two years. So I have a little tag cloud there in the bottom corner. And so there are 73 different vulnerabilities that are represented, and many of these have multiple potential effects. And here comes the part where I justify that statement that I made earlier. So of those 73 vulnerabilities, 65 of them include the word guest, meaning that they in some way originated from a guest on the system, you know, allows local guest administrators to do something. And a number of these involve attacks that allow them to escalate privileges or do an overflow attack based on some shared component that is running in DOM0, and at that point, to completely compromise the system. So looking at those in a little more detail, the attackers target the tool stack 
the hypervisor, and the management software with varying goals. And there are a number of different vulnerability types that appear again and again. And I'm not going to walk through all these things, but you can see that there are a number of possible attack vectors that they can use to escape from a guest and uh, compromise components that are running in DOM0. So the near-term project objectives for this secure server project is to improve the security posture of DOM0 in Zen Server. And so what we're looking to do during the next couple months is to isolate the network stack, isolate the storage stack, and isolate the device model, because we've identified those as some of the most vulnerable components, and then to adapt the existing tool stack to support this configuration. And so we're working on applying some well-known security principles, so securing the weakest links, separating privileges, and avoiding sharing of mechanisms using DOM0 di disaggregation, so a technique that I'm sure you're all familiar with. And we're looking at granting and enforcing least privilege using hypervisor mandatory access controls, and finally using attestation to verify the integrity of the system and do defense in depth. And so a number of these design principles have already been applied and validated on other Zen-based platforms. So what we're really looking to do here is to establish a baseline based on Zen server that can be used for additional research and development. And I would argue that we're successful if we can produce a prototype that can be used to demonstrate the value and feasibility of these proposed architectural changes, and also, again, to serve as a baseline for additional research and development moving on. So now I'll dive into a little bit of detail on the work that has been done so far and that will be done on this short-term prototype. <clears throat> so using the, we defined a set of technical requirements for secure server using the NIST 800.53 catalog of security control recommendations and the CNS, CNSSI security control overlays as a guide. And really the purpose there was just to, again, establish sort of a baseline for systems that are requiring high confidentiality, medium integrity, and medium availability. And so you might be asking yourself, well, why did they use these security controls? And the, these requirements are out there, and they're well-defined. So we don't need to reinvent this. We can use this as a baseline and then sort of iterate on this as a set of requirements for the project. <clears throat> and so, as I mentioned already, we're looking to apply DOM0 disaggregation to move some of the components out of DOM0 and into isolated subdomains and driver domains. And so raise your hand if you haven't seen this sort of DOM0 disaggregation architecture before. So this is not a, a new idea, uh, but it may be new to you to learn that we have this configuration running on Zen Server 6.2 right now. And so that's really what we're looking to do is apply some of these ideas to the existing code base. And so I guess just in summary, moving the network stack into a separate VM, and we're looking at a NIC that can target a physical network controller or a virtual function in an SRI OV device. And for the storage stack, we're looking at supporting both a local SATA controller or also a network attached storage. So right now we're looking at iSCSI. Uh, in terms of hypervisor mandatory access controls, so again, Zen has support for XSM and we're looking to leverage that support to limit privileges in two dimensions. So one is to sure, ensure that each one of these components that are running in a separate domain is granted limited privilege. And the other is to maintain separation between the different tenants and the components associated with those tenants that are running on the system. And so some of the recent changes that were made in Zen 4.3 and to the priv command driver in upstream Linux has facilitated the work that we want to do here. And so we're looking at uh, kind of rolling the support into Zen server. 
So one question that I've been asked a few times before when I talk to people about this is, isn't that overkill? And one proposal is if you really want to protect the IO traffic, for instance, between these two tenants, why not just use software encryption in the different VMs or domains to protect the IO before it ever leaves the domains and so that everything is encrypted in DOM0. So I went out and looked for a vulnerability that I could use to illustrate this point, and it just so happens that the community was good enough to accommodate me. Uh, just a few weeks ago, there was a CVE, it's 2013-4344, where there's a buffer overflow in the SCSI implementation in QEMU that allowed a guest to compromise QEMU and attain privileges. And so even though we have a per instance QEMU process running in DOM0, once that process has been compromised by an attacker, then the QEMU process has unfettered access to the memory assigned to that other tenant. And at that point, your encryption is not very useful because the encryption key can just be extracted from memory. And if you don't like that example, I can list a whole bunch of others based on other components that are running in DOM0. So now I'll talk a little bit about how the disaggregation can address this problem. And so again, we've isolated these components in different domains, and we're using the mandatory access controls to restrict the privileges that are assigned to the various components. So if the attacker comes in, violates the, or compromises the green domain, and then uses that as a springboard to compromise the QEMU emulator, the only memory that they're able to map in is the memory that's assigned to that green VM, and so there's been no compromise of the tenant the other tenant that's sharing the system. And you can make similar claims about providing stronger data confidentiality insurance by isolating these storage stacks. Uh, let's see here. So right now we're looking at using static mandatory access controls because that's all that XSM supports is a static mandatory access control policy. One thing that we're very interested in and something that we're working on right now is dynamic mandatory access controls because in a cloud environment, we have tenants who are gonna come and go. The relationships between those tenants are evolving over time. So we're interested in how we can support a dynamic XSM policy. And I don't really have time to go into too much detail on this, but if you're interested in this topic, I would encourage you to uh, attend Phil Tricka's talk later this afternoon. I think he'll be talking about this a little bit. <clears throat> uh, so until now, we've assumed a trusted computing base that includes Zen and the hardware. And so one other research and development thrust that we're looking at in this is supporting both static and dynamic attestation. So we don't really intend to trust these things. We'd like to use measured launch to check the integrity of the system at boot time. And then we're also very interested in using dynamic integrity or dynamic attestation to verify the integrity at runtime. And this is especially important on server platforms that are typically going to be long running. And so I have a little graph here to illustrate the problem. but. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this, where you can take a measurement using the existing dynamic root of trust and tboot support, TPM, TXT, all the trusted computing base, you, their support is there now to take a measurement at boot time. And in fact, Zen Server 6.2 has a supplemental pack that supports measured boot of the Zen hypervisor and the DOM0 kernel. And so we're looking at how we can extend that to both cover some of these components that have been moved into disaggregated VMs and then also how we can support uh, dynamic attestation so that we can have a chain of trust all the way up through trusted components. So current status of the project. As I mentioned, we just started working on this four weeks ago, but we've made pretty good progress so far. We started with the Zen Server 6.2 appliance. In parallel, we're also looking at using Zen Server Core on a couple different distributions. And so far we've been successful in building a network driver domain and a storage driver domain. And the network driver domain is, we've demonstrated it using both open vSwitch, distributed virtual switch, and traditional bridge networking. And then for the storage domain, we have both the iSCSI target and also using a local SATA controller. And the QEMU stub domain in, is in development. Uh, the big hang up there is that so I've been told QEMU, Q, 
QEMU support is not compiled into the Zen Server 6.2 appliance. Stubdom support is not compiled into the Zen Server 6.2 appliance. It is in Zen Server Core. And so we're kind of looking to, or at least in some version. So we're looking to reconcile those things so we can have one platform that is running all these components simultaneous, simultaneously. And we also defined a mandatory access control policy for a specified use case, and we were able to verify and validate that. Um, so Zen Server 6.2 does not support XSM. It's on an older version of the hypervisor, and again, that support isn't compiled in. It actually turns out that backporting that would be relatively straightforward. Um, but the next release of Zen Server, which I believe is coming soon, is based on Zen 4.3, and well, the support should be there. Uh, some of the challenges that we've faced so far coming at this as an outsider, uh, the main one has really been deducing the relationship between the Zappy constructs in Zen Server and the Zen constructs that we're all familiar with. So all of these concepts have been applied before in versions of open source Zen, but getting this to work on Zen Server without breaking some of those management interfaces and still allowing the users to interact with the system through Zen Center and through some of these other management systems has been something of a challenge and so one of the things that we're interested in is adapting the tool stack moving forward to support some of this disaggregated operation that's okay uh, so just to give you one example of that we can we have certain components of zappy that are running in dom zero now and some components we can move into a driver domain vm for instance our network domain vm we can install zappy network d in our driver domain VM. Uh, the problem is that it won't function as you expect it to function because it expects to be communicating with Zappy, expects to be communicating with the DOM0 via a local domain socket. Uh, so I guess that's a good segue into my next slide, which is talking about the roadmap. So I'm gonna jump a little ahead a little bit into secure inner VM communication. And that's obviously an important component of this is supporting some mechanism for all these different VMs that are running on the system to communicate and adapting the tool stack to use that mechanism. And of course, we've done our own survey internally, and there are more than a dozen different published mechanisms. And this is one instance where we're definitely interested in working with the community and getting feedback from the community because we can prescribe something but our long-term vision is that we want to enable interoperability with potentially you know, components that are part of Zen Server, Citrix Zen Server, and then also components that may potentially come from other third parties. And so developing an API to support this standard interface that virtual machines can use for something like this is something that's important to us. Uh, the other component on this list that's in that vein is the service VM model. So right now we're using uh, driver domains that are based on the DDK VM that is distributed with Zen Server 6.2 uh, simply because it was expedient, but it is definitely not the right environment to use for these driver domains. And so we're interested in looking at reducing the footprint both in terms of resource consumption and the attack surface that's provided by the service VMs while still maintaining generality that would allow some of these third-party components to be developed and interacting via the standard interfaces. So I've been updating these slides kind of as I listen to talks in the community here, and I know that Mirage, for instance, is something that's new to me, and that would be one possibility for this, and there are others as well. Um, I'm kind of running out of time here, and I want to leave time for questions, so let me just jump to contributions and what we're looking to use this for. And so we're looking for ways in which we can engage the community and to uh, use the work that we're doing right now and feed that back to the community so that other people can use this, as I said, as a baseline for future research and development. And one thing that I think we could do in the short term is to publish some blog posts uh, whether or instructions on the mailing list because one of the things that I mentioned that we've worked through is coming up with recipes for how you can support these driver domains on Zen Server and identifying some of the pitfalls and roadblocks involved with that. And then also long term, we're looking at contributing code, and that may involve some changes to Zappy and the way that different components interact with one another. And so we can interact both through the Zen Server developer mailing list and also participate in the Zen Server core project, and then potentially templates for these different driver domain VMs and Zen Server configuration that's involved in this. So at this point, because I'm running out of time and I'd like to leave some time for questions, let me just wrap it up here and say that we're 
We're looking at developing a secure server virtualization platform based on Zen Server. Uh, I've listed some of the key goals there at the top. Right now we're building a baseline prototype by drawing on past research and development in a number of different areas. We're looking to release a prototype at the end of this year and we'd like that, pro hoping that prototype can be used as a foundation for future research and development. And sort of the second phase of this project will be to identify outstanding challenges in the long-term R&D roadmap. So feedback is encouraged. I didn't leave a lot of time for questions, but if you want to contact so me let's later. Take two questions if we go if somebody else could handle that because I'm I have to set up the next talk which we're going to have to do remotely via Skype. <laughs> so questions? So um, you you say you're um, adapting the tool stack for this application. Uh, are we going to see patches for that? Because that sounds really exciting. Uh, that's the goal. So that's one way that we would like to collaborate with the community. So I said it at the start, we're a small research company and so we can't, we're probably not the right people to take on the job of completely rewriting the Zappy tool stack, but there may be some aspects of this that we can address and then we can feed back those patches to the community and maybe that will drive additional interest in or support, adding additional support for disaggregation into Zappy. So there are certainly some small changes like the Zappy network daemon and the way that the rest of the Zappy interacts with that that we could make and feedback those patches. So yes. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Ah, one more. So, can you just uh, flip back to slide 12, please? Uh, okay. Let's see. 12. Yes. 12. Um, you talked about is this overkill. Um, ah. One other option, I, mean, I, I, I personally don't think it's overkill because I've written several slides like this before as well. Um, but could, would it make sense to consider a kind of a dom zero per tenant or per level in an MLS sort of model? Um, so obviously what you're doing here is effectively creating non-zero functionality through a series of disaggregated domains. Would an alternative be, for example, to have um, maybe a nested virtualization solution where you have maybe a whole zone system with its own non-zero for each tenant? Uh, it's certainly a possibility. Nested virtualization is something we're interested in and we're looking at. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have SenseOver 6.2 running on, maybe I shouldn't say this, VMware Fusion on my laptop here. And, uh, <laughs> so uh, that works pretty well. I, I had not considered that approach, and I guess it's something I'd have to think about. And in some sense, we're doing that by doing the disaggregation and by having these separate per, you know, in a way it kind of is a subset of DOM0 per tenant. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.